Thomas Green here with Ethical Marketing Service. On the podcast today, we have Adam Heinley. Adam, welcome. Hi, mate. How are you doing? Marvellous. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing really well, thank you, today. Just getting over a little bit of a cold, but I am doing very well myself, mate. Good. Would you like to take a moment and tell the audience a bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, of course. So my name's Adam Hindley. Um, I am the founder of a business called A Game Consultancy. We are a health and well-being business. We primarily help people with their mindset to improve their mental, physical, and internal health. I started the business with myself, my two business partners. All three of us are called Adam, which is crazy in itself. But um, between us, yeah, we've got myself who covers physical health and my background in physiotherapy. My other two business partners, one of them is a nutritionist and one of them works as a life and mindset coach. So um, we cover all aspects of the mental, physical and internal health. And we do that with individuals with our coaching program. And we work with corporates and businesses uh, on kind of corporate wellness programs as well, which is really, really cool. Thank you for the introduction. There are a couple of things that I want to ask you as a follow up. Um, I think the main one I'm going to go with is if you've got two business partners who, um, let's say, focus on the topic of mindset, I'm interested to know what's the, should we say, the best bit of advice or the best learning that you've gotten from working with people who are focused on that topic? Yeah, the, the, the biggest thing for me is it's always around what people want isn't necessarily what they need. And um, a lot of the time people come to us or they'll come to me particularly going like, I want a six pack, I want to get a beach body, I want to lose weight, whatever. And that's not actually what they need. What they need is they need to be able to shift their mindset around um, around the relationship with exercise, around the relationship with food, around the relationship with their own body and their own relationship with themselves. And often I just, I kind of massively prompt people is like, if your goal is weight loss, the best thing you can do is throw the scales out and start looking a little bit more into yourself and internally. And this is something that we focus a lot on the business. And it's why when I say at the start is that we work on people's mindset to improve their mental, physical and internal health, because your mind is like the anchor. That is the main point. That's what it's telling you to do every single day. That's what you, that's the lang that that's the conversations that you're having with yourself. That's the language that you use to yourself whether whatever you're talking about, these things are so important to get right. And then you let the body, you let the mindset, you let the routine almost be a, by, a byproduct of this. So we need to work on your kind of your mindset and your relationship with something first and what that's like in the language that you use to yourself. And then we can start to, to let everything fall, everything else fall into place as well. So it's a little bit of a different shift to what you'd normally see in your kind of coaching remit in a sense. So did you... Uh, know that going in or did you have that approach as a result of for example telling people how they get a six-pack and then noticing that they weren't doing anything yeah well it was a little bit like the business has developed in itself as we have we have we all started out with being the three Adams with the three different levels of expertise three different areas of expertise and then come together and we found that a lot of our clients had things in common is they'd come to us wanting one thing but then they'd end up needing another thing so we'd end up branching off the other way but I almost learned this myself the hard way by um like diving into a little bit of my personal stories I start I competed in a bodybuilding competition and was ripped on stage like my like sub five percent body fat kind of um really to that point but I'd always I'd had a uh, issues with binge eating as I'd growing up and when I competed on that stage I thought that I'd be feeling my best I thought I'd be at my best but when I looked my best I actually felt the worst like my mental health was in the worst position it could have been and that led me to going back to binge eating the day afterwards and the day after the competition I actually ate 10,000 calories which is an absurd amount of food and um, because of that I realized that just because I've put in the physical work, I've achieved what everybody wants to achieve by getting the six pack and getting ripped and having no barely any body fat. I'm still not happy here. So I need to approach my approach it differently. I need to go from the mind. I need to use the, how can I approach this from improving my relationship with food, improving my relationship with exercise and myself so that I can now achieve um, happiness within these areas. And that's what everybody wants. I don't care what you want on like, whether you want more money, whether you want to 
lose weight or whatever, that doesn't matter. What you want is happiness. What you want is to be happy and feel happy in yourself. And if we can break that down and work out, okay, what is going to truly make you happy, then you can start to actually make progress with people. So again, people want this surface level stuff, like the the body, the uh, to lose weight, they want uh, to improve the mindset, they want to improve the relationship. But what you really need to do is work out what is actually going to make you happy and then dive into it a little bit further there. And I think that having the holistic approach of the three atoms there with the mental, the physical, the internal health really gives it a, a whole like a, a whole perspective of what your health is like rather than just focusing on one area like you may do with other people. It's a really interesting um, topic of how people can, in your instance, you've achieved that goal that you wanted to do. So your bodybuilding competition, 5% body fat. Um, I think in a lot of instances, because people don't achieve that or they don't achieve this grand goal, um, they continue to chase it and think that they still would be happy if they reached it. Whereas I think there are a few people, I've seen a few videos, one of them, um, Tyson Fury talks about how he was um, five time heavyweight champion. And uh, he was, you know, completely miserable, like there's nothing else for me to do. I thought I was going to be happy. And now I'm not. And I think it's a really interesting thing that um, there is that preconception that if I can reach this amazing goal, then I'm going to be happy. And like you said, I mean, did you pretty much feel the same when you, when you're at your peak physical fitness? Or yeah, perhaps so, worse? No, yeah, no, that's it. I felt worse because when say there's, there's peak physical fitness and then there's stage ready, because when you're doing bodybuilding and you're doing that kind of thing, you're, you are anything but peak physical fitness when you are stepping on stage because you are so physically and mentally drained, like you've starved yourself for so long. You get past the point of where this is healthy. Now this is unhealthy. This is just getting as lean as you possibly can. And these things are they're just uh, not ideal at all for, um, for your mindset and how you actually approach your relationship with these kind of things. So when I step on stage, I almost imagine myself to, so I have like this, there's two points. And normally I put like a transformation picture together of the Adam before. So I weighed five, five stone heavier than what I was when I competed on stage. So that I put a picture of that Adam, a picture of me when I were on stage are all tanned up. I was lean as hell. And then a picture of me uh, last year, I put this, this picture of three together. And a lot of people commented on it saying that you can tell just by looking at your eyes that, the first two Adams, one being overweight, one being on stage, look exactly the same. Like, like the facial expression, the kind of the way that the eyes looked look the same. And I can I can see that because I felt it. It's like I changed so much, but also so little at the same time. And I think that that's where a lot of people get um, hung up in certain areas as well. Is that they're trying to change the surface level stuff, and you can change that stuff. Like that stuff will change. But what's the mindset? What's the relationship with it? Which is a, a big key pointer, which people need to think about really doing the work around. It's interesting. Do you want to um, tell me a little bit how your uh, your business got started? What's the story there? Yeah. So basically, I um, throughout COVID and throughout uh, the whole that whole period, I was very stressed. So I was working as a physiotherapist at this time, like it is my background. And as you can imagine, being a physiotherapist working in person just went to nothing, basically. Like I wasn't able to, to work at all. So uh, being self-employed, the government did not very help. I didn't help self-employed people very much. So um, I ended up getting a lot of anxiety and stress around finances and around money. And um at a this certain point, I reached out to my friend who had started his life coaching business, who happened to be the other Adam, uh, about getting getting some help about my routine and my daily habits and things like that. And I worked with him for um, a block of six weeks and I saw loads of progress. And he said to me that it's like, I love, love working with you. Like you're an action taker. It's really positive. You're the perfect kind of guy that I want to work with. So we just kind of went our separate ways for a little bit. And then he came back to me in the December of... Um, of 2020 and just went to me look i've got this idea i know you you your background and another guy he happens to be called adam he's actually a nutritionist as well 
all three of us could come together and we could do something great here. I think that there's a gap in the market for something of like a complete holistic approach to health and well-being. I was like, you know what? You're right. Like, let's go, let's do it. And within like within the space of having that conversation to a week later, the business was like registered on company's house. We were getting ready to go. We're having conversations with companies about doing stuff in the new year. And then within January, we took on our first 15 clients, which was, which was crazy in kind of the whole marketing side of it. And, uh, we just, we just went literally from strength to strength. And, um, over the last, over the last year, we've worked with companies like the Atlantis in Dubai, uh, Skybound, a wealth management company in Switzerland. And, like lo- like hospitality industry throughout the UK of like rare restaurants and gaucho and stuff like that. And it's been, it's been great to see how health and wellbeing has developed. And I believe the awareness since the whole COVID and lockdown, I think the awareness around health and wellbeing and mental health has come into play so much and how business are actually taking this seriously now and actually looking for people to, um, of ways to invest in their staff's mental health basically and it's, it's good it's really good to see it's really positive that they, this is the way that the world is is going at the minute i didn't think your client would be a company necessarily so who who is the yeah. um your typical customer so we have like it's like i say it's at the start it's like two sections to the business we have our um we have our one-to-one coaching style of things where it's like the full health reset kind of holistic approach to your reset in your health and then we have the the company side of it. So on the on the company side of it, we have niched down a little bit recently and we work with more small to medium businesses because we found that we can have a greater impact with the, the the teams that have got employees around 30 to 100 rather than going into your big, big corporate style stuff. So we normally work with small to medium businesses around that kind of level um, for the, the corporate style training. And then we primarily work with with men like uh, high performing men who want to achieve something in their life that they feel like they're just a little bit stuck at the minute. And what we like to call the, the, the habit matrix, the stuck in that kind of life where just life seems to be repeating itself week after week after week. And you're not really making any progression in different areas of your life. That's what we call the habit matrix. And it's about breaking that, finding out what you're curious about in your life. What do you want to achieve? Where do you want to go? And then facilitating that about where you go within your mental, physical and internal side of your health. Sounds good. No, it's 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 really like it's really positive, and we've seen a lot of, um, a lot of positive changes from from people as well. Like some of the testimonials we've seen is great, but um, but yeah, it's like some of the some of the big big things are like like I say, it's and the big lessons that we've learned is that it's not always about what people want; it's about what they need, and you need to find a way of being able to to do both, basically. Because sure. you're going to build trust with someone if you give them what they want, but then at the same time, you know best as it's your job to give them what they need at the same time. I think that that relates to pretty much anything in any area of business, really. Like when you're an expert in marketing to say, you may someone may come to you and go like, I want to do this, this, and this. But you're like, no, actually, for your business, this, this, and this is going to be a lot better. So it's like, it's how do you do that in the best way possible? And I think that that's very relatable in any industry. Well, on the topic of marketing, um, in prep for the uh, for our conversation, I did check out the socials, and you are very, very good. Your social media approach. I was just wondering if you would share, let's say, what your tactics or what your strategies are there. Yeah, of course. So um, until next month, we're starting with a marketing agency, and we're going to be running paid advertisements. Everything we've done until then is organic marketing that we've done. So we haven't done any paid marketing until, like I say, until January when we're, we're going to start doing some more, some of that. But yeah, so my background is, so within, we have the three Adams, we've all got good, um, we've all got good skill sets within business as well, which complement each other. So mine is social media. And then one of the other Adams is uh, sales and that kind of thing and networking. Then one of the other Adams is like the back of the house systems, the website and all that kind of stuff, the automations and them kind of things. So when it comes to social media, I've done YouTube for like five years, doing vlogs in the past and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've been doing Instagram content over the last four or five years as well. 
And I've just been pushing out on like Pinterest, on LinkedIn, on just all over the place, basically learning about all these different platforms. So there's often there's a lot of gurus that say like, just dial down on one and stick on one and stay at it. And I agree with them if you don't know what you're doing on all of the other ones. But the 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 genius thing for me was repurposing the content. It's like I make one YouTube video a week for the for the U, the A game, bring your A game YouTube channel. That YouTube video is then transcribed into a blog post. That um, blog post is then snippeted up so we have copy for throughout the week for different blog for different posts and stuff. That YouTube video is then cut into uh, three or four reels to be posted on different platforms throughout the week. And then we'd potentially use some pictures or some infographics that then use that blog post copy. So realistically, I'm creating a YouTube video and a blog post, and then everything else is created around that. And everything else is then leading back to where we want it to lead, which is obviously gaining traffic to our website, getting people into our Facebook group and our community from that point of view there as well, which is it's really that side of it is is really, really good. The organic marketing side of it has been really good. And then it's about nurturing, building the community, letting the clients that we work with now uh, leave testimonials, let them talk to us about talk to everybody else about the changes that they're making and in the in their life and just building a community around it. Like that's the biggest thing and the most thing that I'm proud of, the biggest thing I'm proud of over the last year is not well, the business has come a great a great way and that's great, but it's the community that we've built. It's the people that we have, they, they've coined themselves now. They're the A-gamers. We have this community of A-gamers that are just these people that are like, just love it and just get so involved with it. And that is by far the best. Your people, the people that work with you are your best marketing tools. And I think that that's been really, really powerful for us. And do you, because um, that sounds like um, a lot of work for the typical business owner. Do you do all that yeah. or do you help some, does someone help you? Like what's the, what's no, the so I, I'm, like I said, I've done a lot of the actual content creation. I do a lot of it. Like I do literally say 90% of it personally, and then scheduling it. We all take it in turns to do, say if it's our own personal platforms or the actual A game platform or whatnot, but no, because I'm quite dyslexic. I don't do the copy side of it. So I give that to one of the other Adams. The strategy was all kind of my idea of like, this is what we need to do. But the actual way that we div divide it out, we divide it out between the three of us. Um, we did take on an editor, someone to help me edit, edit the content and stuff at, at one point, but um, it just didn't work out like financially in the moment. It was like, okay, well, I've, now that I'm not doing this, I've got so much more time. Wait, no, I'll actually just do it because I've got so much time still. <laughs> it wasn't like it was it was overstretching me, uh, overstretching me for the time. So we are willing to outsource it when it comes to the fact that we need to. But as of for this year, it has been uh, the three man band that we've we've kept working with really. So if you've got the time, then do it. If you don't have the time, then outsource it. Yeah, that's exactly. All stays it. within and the three atoms, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that, that that's a, a lesson for a lot of people is that we, like I say, we have a big thing of this year has been expanding the team. And uh, and I massively, massively believe that the quicker that you quicker you want to scale, the more people you're going to have to bring on board. So certain things that um, I'm sure that you'd, you'd talk about doing about being on, on social media platforms, engaging with other people, coming in other people's content, like at sharing other people's posts and stuff all these kind of things are very time consuming so this is what we're looking to outsource with potentially like a va um va company or like online business management style company and then um this is why i love doing stuff like this like reaching out to podcasts and being on podcasts as well because i've got my phone up there recording me right now and there may be snippets of this that go out on social media <laughs> so it's like it's just multi-purposing the different things that you you do all the, all the time, which is, which I think is really, really a, a good way of looking at it rather than it just being one piece of content. Now it's done. It's like, nah, it's like, get that one piece of content across all your different places that you need to get it. Smart. Yeah. Coming back just briefly to the, um, wants versus needs. Um, yeah. if someone does come to you and they say, I want the, you use the example, 5% body fat. 
Um, yeah. I think people struggle with um, knowing exactly what they want. So what do you say to that person who, who says that they come to you and they say that, what do you say? So this is, this is always, it's, it's a simple technique that um, I, I mean, I'd, I'd prompt anybody to do this. Um, I always, I like to do it in, in your general life. You go, um, why do you want to be successful is the first question that you ask. And then, so in that sense, it would be, why do you want uh, 5% body fat? And then they give you an answer. Oh, because it'll make me look good. Oh, so why, why do you want to look good? And you just repeat the same answer to them with the why in front of it. And eventually when you get past all kind of the beauty pageant answers and like, why do you want to be successful? So I can have money for world peace. It's like, no, no, we're going to get past this. And like, what do you truly want? And you get down to what would be kind of your real why. So, okay. It's like the, the why for the 5% body fat is because I've been chubby my entire life and I've been, I was bullied when I was younger and I need to prove to everybody else that I'm, I'm really this person or whatever. And then, okay. So it's like, okay, so you don't want to, um, you don't want to be 5% body fat. You want to be validated because of actions that happened to you in the past. So it's like, okay, well let's, let's do some work around that. Like who is it, these people that you want to try and get validation from? Like, do you still, it may be that one bully, that one kid that said something to you when you were 10 years old or something, and you've held on to that. It's like, so when you do get to 5% body fat, cause I've been there, I've been that fat kid. It's like, when you do get to 5% body fat, what, what are you going to say to that, that bully? Like, are you going to say anything? Have you spoke to this person in God knows how long? Does that person even remember what you've actually said? <laughs> so it's like, you, you need to be able to be, you need your, you need your client. You need the person that you're working with to be vulnerable and to be able to, to open up and talk about some of these kind of almost like darker areas of the life. But when they do, and when they open up about what it really means to them, it's, that's where you find the true need rather than want. And it's the same when, like I say about, we, we align it with business and I open up a little bit more about mine. It's that I will, I want to be, I see myself as like, I want to be successful because I want financial freedom. I want location freedom. Well, why do you want that? Because my um, mum and dad never had it and I never saw myself having it as a, when I was a child. Well, why, why do you want to, to show your mum and dad that you can have that? Or, well, my dad had a lot of debt and it drove him to depression. It's like, okay, now we're getting down to some deeper points of it. And it's like, then it goes like, I never want my family to see me go to the dark places that my dad went to because of financial debt and struggles that he was having when I was, when I was younger. Okay. Now we're getting to like some deeper meaning. So no, you don't just want a million pounds in a nice car. You actually want to have this financial stability that you never had when you was younger. And like, that's the kind of thing that will really potentially drive people to actually get up on a morning, put in the work that they need to do. And that's going to drive you a lot more than going, I want to be a millionaire and having pictures of like a millionaire and a nice car on a vision board on the wall. Like you need to be able to get down to really have, like I say, it's the inner work. It's doing a little bit of the inner work to kind of find out where you want to be. There's a better use of time as well, I would suppose, because if you spend years doing something that actually you find out you actually don't want, I mean, you can, yeah. it's just a much better way to spend your life, right? Working towards something that actually matters to you. Mm. I think that's, that's, that's a hundred percent it. And a lot of the time people, um, you'll, they'll, you'll see, you'll, they'll talk about it a lot. I know Stephen, Stephen Bartlett, um, he's got a, a podcast called the diary of the CEO and he talks about it a lot in there that he bought a Range Rover as soon as he, his company IPO'd and he sold his shares, uh, he bought a Range Rover and he's wanted this Range Rover his entire life. And his emotions were nothing. He felt nothing when he got that Range Rover. He felt nothing when his company sold and he's worth tens of millions all of a sudden. He felt nothing. And there's so many other millionaires or successful entrepreneurs that say exactly the same thing. I wanted this thing so bad and I got it and I felt nothing. It's like, okay, this, this, this is, this is a theme here. This is happening a lot. So you need to figure out what it is that you do really want and what you do really, because the end of the day is like me saying that I want to be a millionaire 
and then me saying that I want financial stability so that I never have to, my family and me never have to go through the struggles that my dad did are two completely different things. Like that financial stability could be a nice 70 grand a year, cozy, comfortable life. What I actually really want, don't need to keep pushing for the, the millionaire status kind of thing because it's not necessarily that important. Mm. And it potentially neglects your family in some instances. Exactly, yeah. Have you found that um, success in stuff like personal training and successes in quotations um, mm. tends to cross over nicely into your business? Yeah, it, I mean, 100% it does. Like, where I've gone from like a coaching remit into a coaching remit, but it's different. And I feel that this, the way that Air Game teaches now is a lot more authentic to me because it is the holistic approach, it is more of a well rounded approach rather than it just being like, um, I'm a PT and I'm a physio. I help people get better with their injuries and I help them lose weight. Like, that's that's cool that's that's fine but it's like now i actually get to like it's almost impact people's lives rather than impact the body where they are right now like the work that they do with with a game now is going to change the the life it's going to change the way they look at things it's going to change the relationship with themselves and that bit is that bit is something that i'm like really grateful for and i think that's been great from the business and it's been great from like just the development in myself as well from being a personal trainer and working like within like personal trainer and physio and working with injuries and stuff like that and working with people, getting them better from that point of view to actually going, okay, now I'm looking at the whole person. Now we've got a team. I've got a team around me where I'm looking at the whole person. And this is really, really positive shift that it's had from going from that kind of personal training to this business. Well, part of me, um, cause you've spoken about some really meaningful things. Um, part of me wants to talk about the meaning behind it. And the other part is um, I did have one question, which was when you are sort of physically fit or you're focused on the personal training side of things, how does that impact your, let's say, productivity, for example? So um, I guess how much do you focus on physical fitness, as you said before, versus the um, the real meaning behind it? Because I, it, from my perspective, it seems like they might be a little bit in conflict because if someone wants you to, I don't know, help them with fitness stuff and you find out that actually what they want is to spend more time with their family. Um, mm. I don't know. Tell me what your thoughts are there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no. So it's again, it, this is where there's never a one size fits all approach to this um, because people's wants and needs are different. And it's something that we often break down with the person is like I say, you have to give the person what they want at the end of the day as well. So if someone wants to lose weight, then they're going to get an eating plan that puts them in a calorie deficit and they're going to get an exercise plan that is focused around their goals. But we also need to do that work in their mindset to be like, okay, well, why do you really want this? Because we want you to achieve your goal, but we want to know what your really true goal, your true goal is. So there is sometimes a conflict there and there is sometimes where it goes like, you know what guys, I'm going to step away from this one from a physical health side point until this person's maybe in a better place with their mental health or their relationship with themselves. And then they can maybe come back in and work with me a little bit further down the line. And th this tends to happen is like people go through a cycle of, we only do it like an eight week coaching block. So they'll come and they'll work through a cycle with us. And they'll go, no, I want to go again, but this time I want to focus more on this. And we'll be like, cool, well, you still get everything else, but you're focusing on the one side of it a little bit more. Mm. But yeah, that's, that's a big, um, that's been a, a big part of what the business is and the kind of the growth and development around the business. Um, because we've needed to learn that it's like, okay, well, it's not going to be, you have this many sessions with me, this many sessions with, Adam Mayhew in this session with Adam Smith, the other guy, it's going to be like, no, well, this person is really struggling in the relationship and actually the mindset of like loving themselves right now. So they need more mental health side of it. This guy is really struggling to stop himself binge eating. So he needs to work with the nutritionist a little bit more. This person's relationship with exercise is shocking. They just procrastinate all the time. They can't get anything done. They need to work with you a little bit more. And it, it just depends on what, different people's needs are really but 
the main thing that I can say around these three areas is they all interlink. It's like if you go to the gym and you exercise, then you want to eat healthier. And because you want to eat healthier, then your mindset's going to be better because your gut, like food and mood is a thing. Like if you eat the right foods, your mood's going to improve. And then because you're in a better mental state, then you want to exercise more because you want to be more focused on your goals, meaning you want to eat better food. And they just kind of, they all affect each other and it ends up being in like a really positive cycle because there's a lot of um, studies and research out there saying that there's four pillars of health. There's your mind, your body, um, your food and your sleep. These are the four pillars of health. We believe if you get the first three right, your mind, your body, the food, your sleep's going to kind of come into place pretty, pretty well anyway. So if we can manage these three and get these three right, then the sleep's going to become kind of a byproduct as well. So just in itself and in general, they, these points are, um, are really there for people to kind of take your own interpretation of it. But at the same time, it's like, each one affects the other a lot mm. and it's it's really important to realize that i did notice on the channel you did a video on the night routine which presumably mm. is around sleep as well did you want to share anything on that at all yeah well yeah it's then you everybody talks about having the morning routine like the best morning routine how do i have the best morning routine what's the right one is it 5 a.m club is it 4 a.m do i need to get up at six whatever like all the different people talking about different stuff all the time and realistically it's just it's what works for you but if you want to have a good morning routine it all starts with your night because if you're going to bed absolutely knackered if you're watching tv or on your phone right before you go to sleep you're not going to sleep as well um if you're not doing certain things like drinking if you're drinking coffee too late in the day and it's going to affect you in in different areas as well so it's all about just creating like learning about what your body actually needs and like it doesn't need fake lights. Like I've got two fake lights on me right now. It doesn't need them blasting in my face at nine o'clock at night. Then it doesn't, I don't need to be having coffees until 7 p.m. And it's like, because these things are going to disrupt your sleep, like scrolling on your phone, the blue lights from your phone and your computer is going to affect your sleep and affect how you sleep. So your night routine does affect your morning routine. So it's, the, the morning routine starts in the evening, basically, before you actually go to sleep. And that's a, that's a big thing that we actually covered on because we do realize how important sleep is. And I think it's very, very smart that um, it's all kind of been highlighted, all these things. Uh, the issue I find with it is replacing it with what? So mm. do, you, do you actually, you know, what do you do when you're winding down? You literally sitting there with the lights off or candles on or something? Yeah, no, no. So this is this is it, like, we, everybody has their own interpretation of it. So I don't drink coffee after two o'clock. Um, so I don't have any caffeine then. I have blue light glasses. So I tend to go to bed at about half past 10. I will put my blue light glasses on at latest at eight. And then uh, by 10 o'clock, I'll be switching my computers off or whatever. So I'll give myself at least half an hour before I go to bed to um, to not have any screen time really there anyway and there's, there's i mean there's so many different ways you can do it if like the iphone has the the night mode now as well where you're not getting as much screen time and stuff like that and it's not about just saying like this one thing is going to fix it but it's doing a combination of like the little things that matters so like me actually putting the blue light glasses on a phone being on night mode not having the fake lights on my face at this point later on in the day it's like they're the things that are going to going to help but it's like throughout the day are you getting outside are you doing some exercise and all these other like i say all the other little things that add up towards it because i'm not saying that i'm perfect and this is something that um often gets misconceived is that people that talk about these things are perfect in the manner of doing them and it's like i don't think there's anybody like even like your tony robbins or like your mel robbins and the big gurus in this in this self-development space I don't think any one of these is perfect. It's like everybody perceives them as perfect, but they're not. They ha everybody has the things that they go through. Everybody's got their own mental health issues that they, that, that they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's absolutely fine. It's absolutely normal. And I think that people not sharing that is almost more toxic because they think that, oh, I need to get to this level of where I don't feel any negativity in my life ever. It's like it's no, it's it's not. There's always going to be negativity. There's always going to be adversity that you're going to have to deal with. But it's how do you deal with it? 
do you let it rock your inner peace and knock you off knock you off center for like four days or do you deal with it process it move on from it and get on with your day and it's these kind of these are the kind of little things that I recommend to people do they recommend that people do day in day out that really develop that stronger relationship with themselves well I promise you that I'll make a, a better attempt of um not watching Netflix until the moment before I fall asleep. Yeah. Do my <laughs> TV best. in bed. It, TV in bed is one of the it's one of the worst things for it. And like, especially when people fall asleep with the TV on. <laughs> it's like <laughs> just the, the the rapid lights is not gonna help you sleep at all. Is there anything that I should have asked you today, Adam? Um I think I think that's a great question, by the way. But no, I think the uh, main I think we've covered a lot of the main things really around obviously talking a little bit about the marketing side of things of how the the business has uh, done and how it's got to this point that it has so far. And I think that for anyone in business right now as well, there's been a lot of a lot of valuable information and takeaways for for people to have. Really, what are your goals? My goals right now. So and I my can goal... predict one. Ready. I'm going Go to on. predict what your goal is. It's four percent body fat, right? <laughs> oh no, man! I've I've well and truly <laughs> lost the the goal of um, anything aesthetic. I let my body be a byproduct now. My go- no, I have no aesthetic goals. Like one of my main main like things or sayings that I say is to be athletically aesthetic, and it's very important that it's athletically aesthetic and not aesthetically athletic <laughs> i know that's a mouthful in saying it but i want to focus on performance i focus on how i perform in my day-to-day routine i prefer focus on how i perform in the gym and then my body is a byproduct of that so if i got to four percent body fat because my body was being a byproduct of my um habits and behaviors in the gym then fair enough but i don't think it ever would because that's never been what i'd be training for again so like when it comes to weight loss, like I say, I haven't weighed myself in about two years. So that is not one of my goals right now um, to do around anything to do with weight and aesthetics. My main goal, being completely honest, is to be happy. Like what, um, and it's very, very vague. It's like, what does happiness mean? Like, how do you just be happy? But it's like, um, I've got a great relationship with my girlfriend at the minute. So it's, it's great that's that's a goal of mine to have a good relationship with her i would love to travel a little bit more and that's the great thing about having a business that's primarily based online is that i can i can travel around i can do different things like that more obviously depending on whatever's going on in the world at the minute and um realistically it's to just keep working towards that why of building that financial stability for myself in the longer term to make sure that i i don't ever feel like I'm going to be having anxiety around money or I'm going to be worried about um, can I pay the bills the next month or I need to make sure I'm paying the credit card at this time. It's making sure that I am working towards that and enjoying the process and being happy along the way. Because like we touched on before, it's like if you're just chasing the end goal, chasing the end goal and you're hating what you're doing in the process, then you're never going to be fulfilled doing it anyway. So you need to make sure that your vision for whatever you want in life, your vision for your body, your vision for your mind, your vision for your relationships or your career, you need to make sure your actions are actually matching that because we can all go vision is six pack, six pack, six pack, but actions are beers and takeaways, beers and takeaways. And again, you're never going to be fulfilled. The same thing with career. Career is um, uh, financial stability, financial stability, but then actions are, procrastinating and scrolling social media you need to check yourself on what your actual vision and your actions are and that's something that i that i aim to do every day with my goals is just kind of make sure i'm checking myself and making sure i'm staying on track so what do you, how do you stay on track with happiness um so that's that you've got to kind of this is where i think reflection works so I, uh, some people journal i don't personally journal but i do like to take some time to actually reflect on the week like have i enjoyed what i've done this last week have i had impact this last week do i feel fulfilled doing what i'm doing and if the answer is no it'll be like okay well what can we change but if the answer is repetitively no after a few weeks back to back to back then something needs to change so again it's it's having moments of where sometimes you may sit and scroll on social media it's actually thinking about well 
am I fulfilled doing what I'm doing? Are my <laughs> actions actually fulfilled in doing what I'm doing right now? And if they're not, it's up to you to change it. No one else is going to come along and do it for you. It's just about taking action. Adam, have you enjoyed this podcast? I've loved this podcast, mate. I feel like I've talked to you a lot. <laughs> we said it was going to be very conversational, but I feel like I've talked a lot. I <laughs> know, yeah, you're fine. Can you let people know where they can find you if they want to learn more? Yeah, so there's we've got loads of blog posts over on agameconsultancy.com. Every blog post has got a YouTube video with it as well if you want to learn a little bit more about it visually. Um, it'd be great to have anyone as a part of our Facebook community. So it's a Facebook group called Bring Your A Game. And you can follow myself, Adam underscore Hindley on Instagram as well. It'd be awesome to, to see you guys on any of them platforms. Adam Hindley, thank you very much.